Here. It's working our beer. This is the word wall. It has the science behaviors and stuff on it. Um, last year, or for each year, I have them to like draw posters after we go over the rules. And these are some of their posters that they drew. And we have a competition between the classes who has the best poster about the rules. And um, we post them up here. But I have their birthdays up here. I have the scientists of the month and the engineers of the month. So let me show you this other board that I have out here. This is for quality student work here. And I put up their pictures and their work and it just gets to be displayed there. Okay, moving back into the classroom. So these are their desks. They don't really sit here. These computers don't work. They have one-to-one -one devices. So that means that each person has their own computer. And so we rarely use this unless they forgot their computer at home that day. Then we'll have to try to plug it in to see if we can get it to work. All right, so this is the classroom setup so far. Pretty much is gonna stay like this all year. Um, let's see, this is my board. Today's date, which is wrong. I have the current unit, our next test date, which usually is up there. Um, students will, and they have their learning target up there. And order two, and that would usually be like our, or our science and engineering principal. I would put that there. And then I would have their highlighting what. What is it specifically that we're highlighting or concentrating on in that science and engineering principle? That would be our cross-cutting concept. And so I would put the cross-cutting concept there and the phenomena that we're working on. In addition to that, we have our exit ticket, our homework, our content activity for the day, our classwork and our bill work, and this is our agenda. Usually we do some, when we first start a lesson, we do a see, think, and wonder on the Promethean board. So classwork, that's the module. Content activity, that's where the articles, we either do an article or a lab or a source document or some kind of task or something. Homework, this is always up here so they can know what we're doing for that night and they can put it in their agenda when they first come into class. And then the exit ticket or the closure, what we will be doing to tie the entire lesson up that we did for the lesson for today so I can understand that they actually know what we talked about and they understand why we talked about it. Okay, so, and let's see. This is my calendar, um, my desk. So this is a little cabinet I found. Someone was throwing it away, so I was like, I'm gonna keep this. And it has actually come in handy. So I have my mask, and then I have my water bottle that I actually made myself. So I made this water bottle. This stays hot. I got this from Thermos. And there it is, it's from Thermos. And yeah, it stays hot all day. So I really love this thing when I have coffee. I get it from Starbucks in the morning, like a big cup or two big cups, and I pour it in here and I can just have hot coffee all day. So this is our sink. No one uses this at all. It does work, but it's non-potable water. So that's it, it needs to be cleaned. But uh, there we go. And the students know not to mess with that at all. This is the gas line, which I have a safety cover over so students can't use that. Um, this is the other, this right here is actually not hooked up at all. So that's the gas line. This is the eye wash station, which we don't use because of the non-potable water. Um, this actually works as well, but I put papers in there so students can't use it. Um, one of my students made this for me. Safety first, only use apparatus when directed. That was part of their uh, safety posters that they did. And I just kept this one because it was pretty cool. And I just put it on there. This is another overview, another overview of the classroom. And guys, I made this right here. Um, my One of my teammates that teaches with me, she has one as well. And we just kind of did this 
for an extra safety measure, but I did it out of PVC pipes. And these are all one inch PVC pipes with the three tail elbow, the regular elbow. And then I'm gonna put something over it so it's not all wide open like that. It's the missing work folder. So for the missing work, um, this is what I have, fill out the missing work log. And the students basically turn in their completed work. And you open it up. And right now there's book bags in it and other stuff. I need to clean this out. I haven't cleaned this out since we left. And these would be the dates. So each month has, I would replace everything in here each month with whatever kind of worksheet or whatever kind of assignment. And they can pull it out and see what they need to work on it and go and work on it and turn it in. Yeah, so this is everything here. I'm gonna go over what they gave us when we came back to school. And these are all of my notebooks and stuff. And more notebooks. There. I wanna show you guys this. These are our books for the year. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. So these are like, I have it labeled so I don't forget what what is. So this is our science and engineering principle. Um, and they are all printed and I laminated all of them. Okay. And then I have our cross-cutting concepts are listed here. And I printed all of these out and I just changed them out as we're going over the different lessons. And here's my laminator. I bought this with our school supply money. Now we're going to this bottom shelf and the only thing in here is just construction paper and napkins and stuff. So when we do experiments, they can have some napkins at their desk. Oh, uh, actually y'all, I got this from the Dollar Tree too. And sometimes it has a lot of good things I can like for differentiated learning in case they need just a little more practice, um, like one-on-one -on -one practice of reading and articulating what's in the article and then elaborating what they read and answering questions. So this is pretty easy for them to do. Well, for some students it is, but for those students that really need the extra help, these things are great. They were just a dollar. So I think these were really good. Their journals, notebooks. Okay, and this is what I did too. I separate all the materials out into units. So when I go to a specific unit, all of the materials and stuff are already in there so that it's easy to find. So let me take, for example, this one, seasons and climates. Okay, so this would be like one of the first worksheets and things. So they would do this preview, the next unit. So basically it's like the lesson plans for each one followed by whatever worksheet is in there. Worksheet. Okay, so next day, so, so on and so forth. So you get the picture. So that was for seasons and climates. Okay, so this one is genetics and genetic engineering. And so that's what all of those are, followed by more down here. Newton's laws, plate tectonics. Okay, and also we have our plicker cards. So I don't know if y'all have used plickers before. But the plicker cards, each student gets one. They hold it up, like I ask a question and the question's on the screen and then they hold up their answer. It doesn't matter which way they hold it. And I just scan the room with my phone and then it tells me, it populates on the board who got the answers right or what the correct answer is. You can choose to show their name or not show their name, um, but it does give you a report at the end and it tells you who all, you know, what they scored. They got 100, 90, whatever. Super fast way to check their understanding for the bell work through clickers. In case something happens with an outbreak or something. So this goes over your head and it's like a backpack kinda. And you can walk around with it and protect yourself. Like it's like a bubble. So basically you're like a bubble boy inside of here. Okay, next we have this thing. I'm not even gonna show you what's in here.
416, time to go.